Hi there, it's Thursday. Looks like we're live both on Facebook and Insta. Really exciting. Um, Thursdays are my favorite day of the week because I get to teach about the power of beautiful plant materials and essential oils. So very exciting um, chemical constituent that we're carrying on with today. We are in episode nine of the chemistry series, which is really amazing. My name is Dr. T, Tanya Uester from my page, Botanicamy and Alchemy of Soothing Botanic Ingredients. So as you are logging in, please remember to say hi in the comments so that I can see you there and I can give a shout out. And then we are going to get started pretty soon while we are just waiting for a couple of people to log in online to get started with episode nine, which is all about Carvone. Now, two episodes back, so this is nine, so not eight, which we did last week on Carvacrol, the week prior to that, we talked about menthol. And there it was very apparent that a lot of people get quite confused between using oils high in menth and menthol compared to, for example, those with Carvone. And al although they both seem to have a similar fragrance, um, the one is more supportive for digestive and the one is more supportive for opening up the airways. So welcome. I'm going to be mentioning those differences again today, just so that we, we uh, implant that into the brain, into, into more memory. So let's get started. Carvone is a monocyclic monoterpenoid alkene ketone. Wow, that is a very long word, but basically it's a ketone. And when we talk about monocyclic, you now know that is one circle. Um, that is what it looks like, right? So there's one circle and one circle. Ooh, hang on, you can't see what those ones, I can't write it. You can't see at the bottom what they are yet. I'm gonna ask you a question in a minute. There we go. <laughs> so you can see there is a, a right and a left side. Okay. Um, enantiomers, in other words, positives and negatives of this molecule. And we are talking about a ketone. And a ketone is basically a molecule um, with a carbon atom, right, which is now sitting there on the backbone. Remember when you see a backbone, all of those little corners there are carbon molecules, right? So you're seeing an oxygen molecule which has got a double bond to a carbon molecule, and then those free ends on those sides are usually have to be connected to another carbon or a hydrogen. That is what makes that oxygen over there a ketone. Okay. I can see people have started logging in on Insta. I think the internet is quite slow today. Uh, yes, we have Lisa in, which is really fantastic. Welcome. Good to have you on. And then Soul Wellness, which is, of course, Maria. So very good to have you on. I can't see who's on Facebook because you haven't said hi yet. I can see there's some eyes, but I don't know who you are. So drop your name in there. Say hi so I can see who's actually logged in. So these are what the molecules look like. And you can clearly see right or left side, positive, negative side. Um, and this is because there are different enantiomers specifically for these ketones that we're talking about today, carvone. There's a positive and there's a negative one. And today is really fascinating specifically because that positive and ne the negative one, in other words, the ion load that it has, makes it give it a different fragrance, different aromatic component. I can see Anita's just logged in. Welcome. She's all the way from Northern Africa, which is really exciting. And Gina from London, really good to have you on. Hey, Bev, good to have you on as well. So yes, um, let act, let's actually start talking specifically about the ketones themselves because they usually give the essential oil that they form part of antibacterial properties, antiviral, antiseptic, antifungal, and they're also what we call psychotrisive, which means wound healing. It, it, um, it promotes that scab, scab formation. Um, mucolytic, expectorant, decongestant, immunostimulant, as well as analgesic, in other words, soothing discomfort. So there's quite a lot of benefits that come from an essential oil that has a ketone component to it. Aromatically, we are finding them to be very energizing and uplifting. Others are very stabilizing and grounding. And this is because of the positive and the negative, the enantiomere. So they not only smell different, but they can have different effects on the body as well. Topically, they have really good repelling properties usually. And they also help the skin to look clean and clear. And one of the oils we're going to talk about today particularly is really good for skincare. Um, and it's going to give that nice little zing to your skin if you're going to, for example, put a drop into a toner. 
very supportive to the digestive tract as well. So really good gastrointestinal support that you're going to receive from oils that are high in carvones. So carvone, um, this is why I found this molecule so incredibly interesting. Because of the isomers that I've now talked about, the enantiomer, so the right or the left, positive versus the negative. And if I just remind you again what, what that means is they're made up of, you can see they're a mirror image, right? Exactly the same molecules at different positions, and, and it gives it a different ionic load, okay? You can see it's like mirror images of each other. That's also when they see that things are synthetically produced versus in nature, because in an essential oil that has both, there will always be more of one than the other one, okay? If it's 50-50, it usually means it's actually being produced in a laboratory. So the, um, the fragrance that we get from it um, is a biological response. And that also means that our receptors in our nose is also able to distinguish between molecules, even though they're exactly the same, we're able to distinguish with our senses in our nose which one is right and which one is left. In other words, which one is the positive and the ne negative molecule and which one smells like what. I can see Catherine is also just logged in. Welcome, good to have you on Insta. And Kobus van Toner, good to have you again. So um, this is this olfactory um, sort of reaction that we have, I find incredibly interesting. And now I'm going to give you a description of what we smell from the positive and the negative, And then you tell me what you think I'm talking about in the comments, okay? You all saw my advert going out that we're talking about Carvone today. So you might already have a hint of the essential oils that we are going to be chatting about. But if we specifically look at those enantiomers, the positive one, um, in other words, the, the S molecule, um, they also call it the D molecule. So the positive carvone, I just want to make very sure that I am checking on perfect spot here specifically. Um, so the positive one, uh, so the S or the R, in other words, or the S or the D, I'm saying, sorry, has a mentholated spicy aroma with rye notes and medium strength. All right, that's the one molecule. Think what you think that could be. What is what essential oil would have the carvone in that format of the three that I went that scent went out on my invitation today? All right, so that is the positive molecule. And then if we look at the negative carvone, in other words, the R molecule, or they also call it L molecule, the L carvone, it has a minty and a sweetish medium strength odor. In the comments, what do you think those are? I'm just gonna let that go for about 20 or 30 seconds. Let's see if you if you can guess what I'm aiming at, and then I'll be mentioning basically what they are. There's also a difference between the sensitivities specifically of these essential oils, depending on whether it's got the positive or the negative. Where the positive one, for example, um, this is the one that is actually non-skin sensitizing, so you're able to use it quite strong without dilution, where is the negative molecule, you actually have to dilute quite extensively, all right? You, you're going to be using it very supportively and supporting the, the, the digestive system, for example, in your body. Um, but if you're going to be applying it topically, it's always a good idea to be diluting that one. Okay, I can't see any comments coming through. All right, I'm going to stop the suspense. <laughs> so the one that's got that more, um, the medium strength, the more rye, the spicy aroma, that is going to be caraway and dill. They're all very high positive in the D or the S or the positive molecule, all right? Yay, Irma's also logged in. I'm good to have you on. And Jerry from Zen Botanic on Insta. So good to have you there. And then the negative molecule, the negative carvone, that is the one that is very high in concentration in spearmint. And spearmint can be quite a sensitizing oil for the body, especially when you're going to be applying it topically. So always remember, safety first. Um, it's really good to dilute your spearmint, especially to around a 1% to 2% concentration when you're going to be using it topically so that you don't oversensitize your skin. So 1% to 2%, that would mean one or two drops of an essential oil in a teaspoon of either lotion or carrier oil. Um, that is a 1% to a 2% concentration. What's also really cool is that the, the dill and the caraway carvones themselves are actually used very extensively in the agricultural industry um, because they're used to prevent tubers from sprouting when you're storing them. So for all of you that grow organically like I do, think about your potatoes, for, your, for example, or um, any kind of tuber. And if you would like them to last a lot longer in your cupboard without it starting to sprout, then you can start using your caraway or your dill essential oil. 
It's also very effectively used um, specifically to increase the effectiveness of a garden insecticide, which I'm not very fond of. I would rather go for a more natural plant-based scenario, but they do use specifically the caraway from dill, uh, sorry, the caraway, the carvone from dill and caraway synthetically produced um, that type of molecule. In other words, the plus carvone they use in the agricultural industry to make their insecticide stronger. So coming up, first originally isolated from plants and then produced. And I think that's quite Quite an important point. Carvone is ve um, very inexpensively made and um, can be purchased either the positive or the negative molecule um, from the industry at a very cheap price. That also means that a lot of your products are going to be adulterated and one of them I think that's the most adulterated where they're not actually using the real, spe real spearmint is in chewing gum and in toothpaste, of course, which is always very heavily flavored with spearmint. Um, but they, now you know, they're flavoring it with the particular carvone molecule that's been produced in a laboratory. It's not coming from the spearmint. Right, so we have Galia. Oh, wow, I haven't had you on for a while. Good to have you. Nice to see you online. So let's look at the emotional side of these oils because they're aromatically very, very strong. Um, they're quite fragrant. And I'm going to talk about spearmint specifically here. And the reason for that is it is the oil that we have that is the highest in carbone. Oops, there was a flash of light. So I hope that wasn't a power dip. There is a lot of issues going on with load from electricity at the moment. Let me tell you, with all these storms, I, I was actually hit by lightning twice last night. Not myself, my house. I did almost lose an eardrum. <laughs> But luckily, no electrical appliances went through the roof, which is really good. I know a lot of my neighbors suffered, so I'm very grateful that I was okay. But geez, it was really, really loud outside. So um, let's talk about the spearmint, specifically about the emotional side. That's very high in these carbon molecules. It inspires clarity of thought. Very good to support confident verbal expression. So if you're someone that struggles to express yourself with um, verbally with confidence, definitely reach for that spearmint. It's a helpful remedy. Um, it helps you to rearrange your thoughts in your mind. Um, and it basically, it stops you from feeling really scattered with what it is that you would like to bring across. So usually when you stumble quite a lot, and I tend to do that when I haven't prepared very well or when I'm really, really nervous to talk because I'm really actually an introvert. So I use spearmint very, very regularly before I do any kind of presentation. So I have two blends that I really like to apply. One is called an adaptive blend, um, which has got many essential oils in them. And then the spearmint goes over my throat area um, because it helps me to speak a lot more clearly. So that is where the carvone is presenting, that chemical constituent is pre um, presenting that property specifically to the spearmint oil, which helps us to speak a lot clearer. So that's really cool on the emotional side. Let's also now look at physiologically what it's doing in our bodies, all right? And there's quite a lot of nice clinical data as well as experimental research out there. Oh, Catherine is saying she needs this. I probably need that, needed this on my evening. I think I did a business presentation on Tuesday evening. And sometimes I am in a rush before I need to get to it and I forgot to apply my spearmint and oh my word, did I stumble over my words. <laughs> so yes, Catherine, definitely one that you need to get. Um, it's gonna be really good for that. So if we start looking at the scientific research that's being performed about how we can use these oils specifically in our bodies to support it, when we look at a heightened state of excitement. Now, again, this is probably one of the reasons why I really like spearmint. I use it very routinely in my hair, by the way, as well. Um, I put it in my hair as a hair perfume um, because I really like the fragrance that it gives my hair, especially when I turn my head. But here is a really good preclinical study in humans where they have showed um, with a very heightened state of excitement. Now here they're talking specifically about manic mania. And you do find a lot that people who suffer from certain conditions where it's like the outer polars, right? So they're either really manic or really sad or at a state where they don't really feel anything in between. So those kind of conditions do really well with essential oils and natural solutions that are high specifically in the negative carbone, which the negative, in other words, the, the strepi are, that we find in spearmint. Okay, so this is really good. So when you ever message me and you ask me how I'm doing and I reply to you, manic, please remember to reply back to me, Tanya, use more spearmint. Okay, <laughs> there we go. So for those of you that suffer from the same kind of condition, 
definitely give the spearmint a try. It also has very strong anticonvalescent effects. Um, so this is um, spasms and those kind of things, um, a seizure kind of kind of spasms that I'm talking about because it blocks voltage gated sodium channels. So there's definitely a lot of people that you may be thinking about that could definitely benefit from using this oil. And you're going to even have the effect when you put it in an aromatic ultrasonic diffuser because inhaling these molecules um, is really supportive and it accesses the brain really, really quickly because it goes to the limbic brain after the messages are picked up by your olfactory um, nerve sensors sitting in your nose. Let's also not forget the digestive support. Um, spearmint is incredibly good for digestion um, because it relaxes the stomach muscles. And what they find is it actually inhibits muscle contractions in the digestive tract. And that is why it is such a very special oil to support any kind of um, sort of cramping or digestive discomfort that you're feeling. And I find it really useful to apply the spearmint on my belly area, topically with some carrier oil. Remember, this is one of the ones that are going to um, cause sensitization or sensitizations on your skin if you're not going to dilute. So please remember to dilute. Um, and then I always um, sort of double whammy that because you all know digestive discomfort is something that I suffered with most of my life until I discovered natural solutions. Um, and now I use peppermint internally and I would prefer to use the spearmint topically diluted with some carrier oil in my tummy. We also have a really amazing um, blend that we have for children uh, with the one shown by the white cap from my favorite essential oil blend company and it's called Tamer. And here they have substituted the peppermint with spearmint because it actually has a much softer smell. It's not as pungent um, and therefore it re does really well, especially for the younger bodies. And that blend is obviously already carefully diluted and it's got a lot of other essential oils in there that is going to tame a tummy area that's not feeling so great. Also really good, we know peppermint, and this is where the difference become, comes in. The peppermint is very high in menthol, and therefore it's better known for digest, oh, sorry, for respiratory support, although being really good for digestive support as well. And then spearmint, more leaning towards digestive, not really decongestant, although there is a slight decongestant ability from it. But there is also now studies coming out showing that it increases lung capacity. Um, lung function tests were performed basically and inhalation of spearmint actually increased the capacity. So definitely a very powerful essential oil to have around. And now that you know, it's got a beautiful fragrance. Um, look, if you have been traumatized by certain chewing gums when you're younger, you're probably not going to like the smell of spearmint. <laughs> um, but definitely a good one to have around for all those types of conditions that you need support with. I think one of the strongest benefits of spearmint essential oil is because of digestion. Um, and so it's the, it's the muscles that relaxes. So if you're going to be using your spearmint and you are after that carbone specifically, always use a tested grade oil. Generally, spearmint has between 20 to 60% um, oh, sorry, 20 to 80% carvone. Now you can see that's quite a large bracket. And if you're wanting to have one because of the carvone that's in there, if you can get a lab result for your particular batch of oil, really beneficial. My specific one, for example, this one that I have here, because I can get the lab results um, for my brand. That's why I support my brand and I, I, I'm actually a uh, ambassador for this particular brand because I can get the lab results. Really, really nice for this nerdy scientist in me. Um, mine actually has a concentration of 61.65% carvone in it. So you can see it's really quite high. Um, promotes digestion, helps reduce occasional stomach upset, as I said, and it's going to promote a sense of focus, uplift the mood, and of course, that speech thing all in one when you're going to be putting it over that throat area. So really good for digestive as well as the nervous system. Um, and that nervous system, why I'm mentioning that is because of that manicness, right? That mania. Um, they find that it calms the nervous system down. And that is why it supports those conditions of moving between mania um, and being like really sad and feeling like meh. Okay. Another oil, um, oh, hang on, I've got a nice recipe for you before we get to the next oil that has it in a concentration, a nausea tamer. Now, this one is actually very traditionally used specifically for ladies with morning sickness um, because peppermint, you know, it's, it's great for when you have occasional nausea, but it's incredibly pungent. It's very, very strong. And remember, all of those senses are like really over accentuated when you're pregnant. So then definitely swap it out for the for the spearmint. But this is a really nice nausea tamer kind of recipe that may support you um, specifically during those times when you're feeling slightly nauseous. You can combine five drops of spearmint with five drops of cardamom, 
five drops lavender, five drops copaiba, and put that into a 10 ml roller bottle, all right? So that's 20 drops to a 10 ml in total, all right? Um, that is now, now I've got to do the math here. Can't think that quickly. That's 4%. <laughs> But here, the spearmint, because it's only five drops in 10 ml, is only sitting at a concentration of 0.5%. So definitely, the, pep, uh, the spearmint is being decreased there so that we don't have the skin sensitization. But definitely, the, the total concentration of the oils in there is going to be very supportive in soothing those occasional nausea feelings. And then, of course, you could always just buy the tamer. It's in there as well, and that's going to support the nausea feelings as well. I just actually apply this to my throat area instead of applying the meat spearmint sometimes because I really love the fragrance of that particular tamer blend as well. It's also found, of course, in dill at around 40 to 65 percent. Dill is again very good for that di digestive and the nervous system, very supportive um, because it's also very high in antioxidants, which is always a telltale sign that it's going to support the immune system and it's going to protect the the body from free radical damage. And then caraway, which also has it at 60 to 75%. Caraway oil is probably an essential oil which is lesser known. Um, so if you're reaching for the caraway or if you want the caraway because of the um, carvone that's in there, you can always go for our very favorite digestive blend um, because most digestive blends actually has this caraway in it because again, it soothes the digestive system because it relaxes those tummy muscles. So quite a mouthful for just that one molecule that smells completely differently when you are getting it from dill or caraway versus spearmint, exactly the same molecule with the same chemical structure, just flipped over, mirrored, and it has a plus or a minus charge to it. So really, really effective oil. I hope you learned a little bit extra about carvone today. Always remember that I'm talking here about a chemical constituent in its single form, right? And they always work better when in combination with the rest of the chemical constituents that come in that particular oil, even if it is the dominant molecule. Right, and now you know, because it's so cheaply produced, a lot of the brands that you're gonna buy are probably gonna be quite adulterated and it's probably gonna come from a lab. So if you are after the supportive medicinal effect, the health supporting benefits of an essential oil, always go for a brand that you can see there's a batch code on it, they at least have the species name on it. Even better if the company is willing and as transparent as mine to be giving the lab results to you as the layman for that particular batch of oil. So if you don't have that yet and you want to know where you can get these oils that I'm talking about, please reach out to me. Just pop me a message in the comments and I'll get back to you. And if you want to learn more about these oils, we always have a Discover um, 101, Essential Oil 101 class running on a Thursday evening. And if you're not already um, in contact with a wellness advocate or a distributor who partners with the company that I do, and I'm pretty sure you all know who I, who I support, you saw the images, then um, please pop me a message if you would like to come to my class on a Thursday Thursday evening to learn more. So great to have you all on today learning about carvone and it's the positive and the negative, the R molecule or the S molecule um, and it's the dill, the spearmint and the caraway. So good to have you on. Oh by the way, topical, internal as well as aromatic use for this oil so you can use it all three ways all right but only internal if you're going to be using a tested grade essential oil please always read that label on the outside of the bottle. I will see you all next week, Thursday again, for my next live. Today was episode nine. Next week, it's episode 10. Almost can't believe how far we are in the series. So excited to have had you on today. Thank you. Bye-bye.